This is called a Doppler effect motion sensor. It's a very interesting device. It's able to use microwaves to monitor motion within about 20 feet of it, within an angle of around 150 degrees. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how this device works, viewing the raw output on an oscilloscope, and making some music with it. Let's get started. Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner, Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. This is the Doppler effect sensor. On the back, we can see that its part number is RCWL0516, and we have a few pins here. Only three of them are really useful to us right now. Voltage in, signal out, ground. The 3.3 volt pin just comes from a regulator, and that's not useful at the moment. And the ODS pin goes to an optical sensor that is currently not connected. On the other side, we see two main parts of the circuit. Over here is the microwave generation part. This does the distance detection. And this part is the brains. And this interprets the data from this part of the circuit to know when to turn on the signal pin or not. By connecting this circuit to five volts ground and an LED coming off the signal pin with a 220 ohm resistor, we can watch this in action. All right, so I'm standing over here a little bit away from my desk. I'm maybe 10 feet away. And if I zoom in, you can see the Doppler effect sensor. So you can see when I move my hand in front of it, that LED turns on. So this is the schematic of the Doppler effect module. There are lots of videos on YouTube that have done a more in-depth analysis of this circuit. So for now, I'm just going to do a simple one. Here is the microwave transistor. This microwave transistor has a few other elements around it. What they don't show you in this circuit is that coming from the emitter of this transistor, there is this strange, I guess you could call it a squiggle line that forms the antenna and inductor in this circuit. That line is made of a trace on the circuit board. What the circuit doesn't also show you is the fact that there's a small bit of capacitance between the collector and base as well as the emitter and base. And there's little bits of capacitance throughout the circuit that are very important when it's operating at such a high frequency. Now, typically when this circuit is in operation, it's going to be sending out a high frequency signal of around 3.3 gigahertz. That signal is going to bounce off other objects and be returned to that same point. Now, typically when nothing is moving, that frequency is going to be the same when it returns to the Doppler effect sensor. But if something moves, then the Doppler effect takes place and that frequency is going to be shifted either up by a little bit or down by a little bit. Now that slight difference of frequency when it is received by this circuit is going to cause slight current fluctuations. Those current fluctuations measured as a voltage across this resistor are then filtered by these two capacitors, resistor and another capacitor, acting as a low pass filter before going into this part of the circuit. That small fluctuating voltage is amplified by two operational amplifiers in this part of the integrated circuit that is then passed to the logic portion of this circuit, which is able to detect if there has been any changes in voltage and turn on the light for a few seconds accordingly. This sensor stabilizes out, so once the sensor is reading a constant voltage, it's going to turn off the LED, and if that constant voltage changes, it's going to turn it on and then turn it off once the voltage has returned to normal. Now, while doing experiments with this chip, it's cool and all to have a light turn on and off, but I really wanted to see what was going on and what the raw output of this sensor was. Now, at first, I just tapped into the raw output that goes into this circuit, and it was pretty noisy, and it was a pretty small signal. So I decided it would be best to tap into one of the outputs of the two built-in operational amplifiers of the circuit, and that's where we got somewhere. This is a simple schematic of the Doppler chip, with this piece being just a small portion of what's inside the integrated circuit. So this is the oscillator portion, and the current sensor output goes into this first op amp, then through a resistor and a few capacitors before it goes into the second op amp, before it goes into the rest of the circuit. Which means that the output of the second op amp is pretty close to logic level voltage, and also very clean. So looking at the schematic, I found that this was pin 12, and this would be a good one to plug into my oscilloscope and read the voltage outputs. There it is, all soldered onto pin 12. So let's hook this up. 
I'll hook my oscilloscope up to the other end of this wire into ground and we'll see what this looks like. So right now I currently have my oscilloscope set to a voltage range of 1 volt per division as well as 0.1 seconds per division. Now luckily this is a digital storage oscilloscope, so as soon as I turn on the storage mode, it starts plotting the graph over time, which looks really cool. So here you can see that the graph typically levels off at a voltage of around 1.8 volts. But as I move, the voltage decreases to zero, which is one of the op amps rails, and it increases to 3.3 volts, which is another one of the op amps rails. It's very interesting to see how far away this works. Even if I'm on the complete other side of my room, and I move just a little bit, that output changes drastically. And I'm around maybe 15, 20 feet away from the sensor. Now let's see if we can visualize this waveform as music. So to change this voltage that we were looking at on the oscilloscope into something that we can hear, we're going to need to change it around a little bit. First of all, it's going to run through an LM358 amplifier, and this is to increase the voltage because the current voltage it was at wasn't something that was good enough to work with yet. The output voltage from this final amplifier is going to control the base biases for both of these 21394 transistors in this circuit, which is called an A-stable multivibrator, which consists of four resistors, two transistors, and two capacitors. The frequency at which this circuit oscillates depends on the voltage that each base is biased to, as well as the values of the two capacitors that connect each base to the other transistor's collector. This is a very interesting circuit, and as we vary the voltage here, it'll vary the frequency output, which is exactly what we need. It's something called a voltage-controlled oscillator. The output of this oscillator can be tapped through a capacitor to block any DC signals, and then go into another amplifier, this time an LM386, which is a dedicated audio amplifier circuit. That's then going to go through another capacitor to filter out any DC, and to a 10k potentiometer. This 10k potentiometer is to control the volume. That's then going to go through something called an integrator circuit, which is going to change the square wave that comes out of this A-stable multivibrator to something that looks a little bit more like a sine wave, and something that's a little bit more appealing to the ears. With my trusty Kiwi's power supply, supplying a steady 9.16 volts, and my trusty Instructables Bluetooth speaker that has an auxiliary input for audio, we can now test out this Doppler effect theremin, you could say. Wow, the circuit actually sounds pretty cool. Look, if I move my hand... Well, I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching and have a great day. You could almost use this as like a disc scratcher. That's actually a good idea.